Chris, what is our second main topic today? This one comes from Victor. The A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise has been asleep for many years now after the remake in 2010. Not much has happened since, but producer Jason Blum has said many times he'd love to bring the franchise into Blumhouse, and after their success with Halloween, why wouldn't he? Blum recently did an interview and said that if they were able to do it, he's also confident that he could convince Robert England to come back and play Freddy Krueger. Do you think there's any possibility we could get one more Elm Street movie with Robert England, or do you think this franchise has gone to sleep forever? Thanks. <laughs> gone to sleep well forever. Done, uh, I like that. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. Listen. One of the hottest guys in the business is Jason Blum. This guy has turned an industry and created an industry out of reaching between the cushions on his sofa, finding whatever change he can, and making a feature film that makes $25 million at the box office. That's just a model he's not created, but defined, right? He's done great with that. Now listen, Blumhouse has made some stinkers. Absolutely they have. But they've also made their great fair share of some really good ones. By the way, one of those really good ones is coming out here, and that's The Black Phone, which is wonderful. It's a wonderful film. I'm not going to say it's going to be a top five of the year, but it's a wonderful, enjoyable. It's going to make a lot of money. Fun, horror little film. For a Blumhouse film, it's definitely going to make a lot of money by their standards. It's going to do really well. But what about... Something like Halloween, they brought that back and did a really great job with it, at least the first one they did. Then not a big fan of the most recent one. What about Nightmare on Elm Street? He has talked before about wanting, being loving to taking another crack at it. And he was actually asked specifically about, what about bringing Robin England back for this? This is what he had to say. This comes to us from the good folks over at Movie Web, who said this. While discussing Blumhouse's new movie, The Black Phone, Blum was asked about how he made clear, he has made clear, that he wants the rights to the two 80s horror franchises, that being Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. And he responded, I really do. On the back of this, the question of Robert Englund possibly being out, uh, out of the picture to reprise a role that fans only want to see him play was asked. Blum responded, I could make him come back. I can get anyone back. I mean, Ellen Bernstein was 87 and I got her back into The Exorcist. Yeah, 75? He's young. I love that optimism. And he put that in there. And by the way, we just saw Robert Englund in Stranger Things. And yep. he crushed it. He crushed oh. it. He can still do it. Mm -hmm. And it's Freddy Krueger. He's covered in prosthetics and everything like that. It doesn't matter how old Freddy Englund is. As long as he can still do the role, all for it. But I will say the unpopular thing. This is a dead franchise. It's a dead franchise. Listen, Freddy Krueger, the idea of a guy, of a serial killer who inhabits your dreams and kills you in your dreams... That shtick wears out, and it wears out fast. Listen, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, to me, still kind of works. Like, I still oh. watch that, but but the sequels have never worked for me hmm. because it's just a repetition of the same premise. It's like, okay, I, I get it, but the, the guys in your dreams, there's no chance of success. I mean, it, it is what it is. They tried to remake it. Now, granted, the remake wasn't great, but the audience spoke loud and clear. They really weren't interested in it. And to be frank with you, while Nightmare will always be an iconic franchise for horror fans forever, I really don't know that there's any avenue for victory to trying to do another one again, even if you brought back Robert Englund. I just don't see the point. And so even if I was on you know, Blumhouse's directory board and they make movies for $2 million, I mean, what they make The Invisible Man for? Eight? Eight. Eight million dollars they made that movie for, and what did it make? Well, it made a lot more a lot, than eight. Like hundred million dollars, <laughs> it's a hugely profitable film. I I just don't see the value in doing it. So I don't think this is ever actually going to happen, despite what Jason is saying. But hey, listen, if there is anybody in the world who could make that work, it's Jason <laughs> Blum. Anyway, Rob, you hear about this? Do you think they should take a crack and make another nightmare? And and do you think they will? Well, here's the thing about the nightmare franchise. I'm actually a, a big fan of it because, like, for instance, Nightmare 2, Freddy's Revenge, has gone down in history as one of the great stealth queer films in all of cinema history. Jack Shoulder, the director, he did, no, people didn't get what he was doing, but now it's recognized as being a, a, an interesting coming out film, different. Dream Warriors, the third film, I thought it leaned heavily into the fantastic aspects of it, the fantasy. There's lots of great fantasy set pieces to that. Um, and even even Rennie Harlan's Dream Master, 
you know, and I, I, I think the, and then of course, when they, when they did the self-reflexive Wes Craven's new nightmare where the actors are playing themselves, like right. they've done some really fascinating things with this. And, and don't forget Freddy, about Freddy versus, Freddy versus Jason. Jason. I was going to say Freddy versus Jason. They've done some really interesting things with this franchise. And, and I think it gives them a wide, if they go back and tell another story like the original movie, I think that would be letting it down. I think there's a really interesting, and I don't know what it is, but I think there's a really interesting meta update, the way that the Scream, the latest Scream movie kind of worked. If they could figure out a way to combine fantasy reality with some kind of social commentary and some great horror and and the, the kind of fantastical kills, even all the way back when Johnny Depp is sucked into a mattress and spewed all over the... I mean, the kills in these movies are really imaginative and really fun. That is one of the most iconic kills in all of horror, yeah. Yeah. actually, of all time. And even at the beginning when Homegirls... Or Homegirls is... is She's getting cut. She's rolling on the ceiling and all that. And her boyfriend's like, what the hell? This... this if for nothing else, with the effects technology that exists, the kills that they could put in this movie could be spectacular. Mm -hmm. And I want to see them. And if they brought back, I mean, with Blumhouse, maybe they could do three. You know, they could do the, the Lord of the Rings of the Nightmare on Home Street franchise. <laughs> but I really think, I mean, on the heels of Stranger Things, if they could do something really clever and imaginative, it might be worth doing. But otherwise, I agree with you. They need to step up the game here. They cannot just do another Nightmare on Elm Street because it is dead. It was killed. It was the the remake killed it in 2010. Even though Jackie Earl Haley did a pretty good job, and he was the right choice to to pick up the. He was the right choice. I yeah. thought he was terrific, but what I mean, well, Chris, what I do mean, you think? I can't wait to not see this movie. First of all, <laughs> let's be clear. If anyone can do this, though, it's Blumhouse. I mean, that is where you take excellent horror too. So I think they could really, really execute something, especially shout out to our friend of the show, Cody, who's working over at Blumhouse, who does all kinds of creepy stuff for like, yeah. oh, did yeah, punch ups Cody. for like, nope and stuff too. So I think they could do something really, really fun and exciting here that I will dread going to see. Yeah, but I just, I think there's an opportunity here to do something. It, it has to be off the wall. Yeah. It has to be something that really is gonzo and, does something that we haven't because that this franchise has always pushed it's not just a slasher franchise it has an mm -hmm. imaginative con uh, uh component to it that they can't let go of and i thought yeah. the remake kind of the remake tried to bring it down to earth and i'm like you guys you're already in orbit you got to stay there well, if they went into space like the fast and furious franchise i would be like <laughs> Well, Freddie or Jason did go into yeah. it. I know he did. It's Jason didn't jail. work out so well. Yeah. No, well, but it, so it's great. such a good premise because everyone can share this fear, though, of going to sleep at night and being haunted yeah. by something. So you can do anything with that. You know, what if, you know, just off the top, what if people have a collective dream? So it's not just one person. What if we're, mm. what if somehow he's collectively inhabiting and changing whole civilizations? Ooh. I still think the whole thing's played out, but I don't know. There, if there's anybody who can find a way to make this work, it is Jason Blum. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? Would you be down for another Nightmare on Elm Street? Do it again. Bring back Robert Englund to do it. Would that actually save it? Maybe it wouldn't. Maybe it would. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comments section below and leave your thoughts there. Guys, we want to take okay. a second and thank the sponsor of this video, Helix Sleep. Guys, let me tell you, just a couple of days ago, Ann and I received our Helix mattress, and it is the best mattress we have ever slept on in our entire lives. We had like this $3,000 specialized mattress that we got like five, six years ago, and we liked it very much, but this one completely outdoes it. It's night and day. And you can get matched with your perfect mattress too. See, Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just like a minute to complete. And it matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for somebody else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. I hopped online, took the Helix quiz, and Anna and I were matched with the perfect mattress for us. And it is so easy to set up. Simply take it out of the box, get it positioned on your mattress, take off the plastic, and then give it an hour to to breathe to reach its full size and you will not believe how comfortable this thing is. All you got to do is go to helixsleep.com slash campia. 
Take their 60-second sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. And it's risk-free. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. And here's the best part. Helix is offering up to $200 off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com. Com slash Campia.